Hi fellow hunters, it's Panda here. How are you guys doing? Hope you guys are doing great. Sorry for getting the video up so late, we've been having some difficulties trying to make sure that the builds are well thought of from all points of view and also I've been feeling down lately. Initially we wanted to make this build in game to show the damage so we did try to do some farming but you know I just feel like these jewels have like 0.00001% drop rate. But now that Capcom has increased the reward weights for the Tempered Zunoga Jewel Farm quest, we could probably try farming again. Nope. We did manage to build the best that we can as of now, so we would be showing some in-game footage, but mainly we would show them on Honey Hunter's side just to compare the actual damage with the real build. In this video, we're going to show some Safi Great Sword builds which are extremely concentrated on damage, and we've used a lot of endgame jewels like Attack Jewel 4, which is pretty hard to get unless you've done lots and lots of farming. These builds will have skills like Coalescence, which you might need to trigger manually to get the most damage output. They may be hard to trigger for an average player, so use these builds if you're comfortable with them. Awakening the weapon is as flexible as it can be because you tweak the Awakening mods based on your builds. So we'll make the build first, then work Awakenings towards the builds. We didn't awaken or build the Great Sword to its sharpness because the Great Sword does not lose its sharpness easily as its hits are slow and less often. Also to make sharpness level purple, it will take up more slots of Awakening. It's not worth it as its damage multiplier is just 0.07 more than white sharpness. There are already naturally 40 hits of white sharpness on great sword for us to use and together with the availability of wet fish fin plus, this is more than enough for us. In this video, we focus on building raw damage for Shatter Slitter. All Safi weapons are either elemental based or status based. Status-based Great Swords will only do raw damage with status effects, which makes them the best Great Sword to build for raw, as we will get extra damage from statuses like Poison and Lust. Meanwhile, other status like Sleep and Paralysis would make an opening for a huge chunk of damage. For raw builds, Safi Shatter Splitter is a popular option as it does blast damage of 300 on normal monsters or 600 on Safi every now and then. On Safi, the poison proc will however do 2000 damage on each proc, but you can proc blast more times than that of poison. So if you're using these for Safi, then it's really up to you. We've made a build for Shatter Splitter. This build has a 100% affinity, which comes from Weakness Exploit 50%, Safi 3 Set Bonus 20%, Agitator Level 7 20%, Attack Level 7 5%, Weapon 5%. With 100% affinity, we would be hitting all crits assuming that all conditions are met that is hitting on the wounded parts while the monster is agitated. So we need to max our critical boost to get 140% critical damage. For defense and utility skills, we only have health boost and charger level 3. For augmentations, we went for 2 times attack and 1 element status since there is only left with 1 slot of augmentation after you go for 2 times attack. You could either choose defense or elemental status for the last slot. With all the buffs, attack up large and all skills active, we now check our damage. Of course, different monsters and different parts have different hit zone values which affect the damage done to it. For comparison purpose, let's pick the master rank Kuvtaro Haunts. Putting all attack mods with one attack 6 in our awakenings, the damage is 2760 for True Charge Slash 3 powered. This is 72% of its current cap. It is important to note that to achieve a close to 100% capacity damage, you'll need to factor in Fortitude 2 times and Feline Heroics. So we made do without these skills, now let's compare it to the same build but built for status. Any status needs consistent and continuous hits to build up the status bar as it keeps on dropping every second that you don't hit. Great Sword cannot do this efficiently, 
but building facilities up makes blast procs more often. So, this increased blast procs also increases damage. Status procs get harder to proc after each successful proc. Nevertheless, let's look at the damage on Master and Kruf Terov's Wounded Horns with the status build. Its critical damage only deals 2340, that is a 420 damage lesser than the raw damage build. We can see that the damage is significantly lower, so you lose damage for each attack. If you do one true charge slash, you did 4 hits so you lose about 600 damage. No matter how often blast procs with full status build, you would not cover the damage lost unless you have one blast proc per hit, which is impossible. Here we have made a building game that's only 2 level of attack boost difference and 1 level of resentment. The rest of the attack skills are the same. Let's also check the damage on Safi Jiva's hands. Moving on to Elemental Beast, Great Sword. We are using Frost Splitter in this very same build, but you could use others as well. Now, since Great Sword damage mostly depends on raw damage and depends lesser on Elemental Attack, building Elemental for Elemental Beast Great Sword does not seem to deal as much damage as building for raw damage. This may be surprising for a few, since for most Elemental weapons, they ought to be built with Critical Element. However, that's not the case for Great Swords. To prove this, let's check Frost Splitter's damage on two different builds. This raw build, exactly the same for Shatter Splitter, together with all buffs and attack up large, deals 2783 damage on Master and Kruf's Terov's horns. Here I have a critical element build to build Frost Splitter for Elemental. From the two Volcana armor set bonus, we get critical element. It is also a 100% affinity build. Weakness Exploit 50%, Critical Eye 25%, Agitator 20%, Weapon 5%. Critical boost level 3, 440% critical damage. Defense and utility skills, divine blessing, health boost, focus level 3. Since we're building for elemental, we've added ice attack level 6 and augment and modded for elemental. With all buffs and attack up large, let's check the damage. It deals 2206 on Master and Kruf Terov's horns, about 500 damage lesser than the raw damage build. It is dealing significantly lesser than the raw damage build. That being said, the raw damage build uses Safi Set, which decreases your HP for every hit. If you are uncomfortable with that, then you could go for this critical element build, which would be more comfortable since it does not decrease your health and adds Divine Blessing as well. However, to reduce that damage loss, we could use the same build but build it for raw damage. So we're going to replace Ice Attack level 6 with Attack Boost level 7 and change Augmentations and Mods to Attack Up. Here you can see that your damage on Master and Kruf Terov Horns are now 2,561. That's about 200 lesser than the raw damage build. TLDW For Shatter Splitter built for raw damage, for Elemental Base Great Swords built for raw damage for a DPS build, or built for critical element with raw damage for a comfortable yet above average DPS build. Comparing between which is better, Shatter Splitter or Elemental Beast. While Frost Splitter deals slightly more damage in the raw damage build, we would not advise going for that because there are quite a few downsides to using Elemental Based weapons. One of it is that you have to build and awaken all Elemental Based Great Sword for different monsters as different monsters have different elemental weakness which is one strong reason why Blast became a popular option. Hope you guys have learned something from the video as I had. We have the links to the Honey Hunter builds below in the description for you to check them out. I wouldn't say that these builds are meta sets or best ever but I think that they are pretty much above average in 
damage. We'd love to hear from you if you have a better damage dealing build or if you're using this build, how much damage you're doing for different monsters. Thanks for watching, I'll see you in the next video. Take care, bye!